Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Wow. <laughs> so it's the last couple days of vacation. I'm up nice and early. It's 7.07. .07. I think sunrise is in about 10 minutes or so back behind me. Um, we are at the Sunscape Resort in Akumal, which is near Tulum. We went to the ruins yesterday, which was absolutely lovely. I hadn't been there in 30 years. It was pretty amazing how things had changed significantly. And I specifically got up early this morning so I could record this without a ton of people out here, but there's already a ton of people out here. <laughs> These, um, this is one of those all-inclusive resorts, and so it's kind of, uh, kind of popular, a little bit not my style. I prefer a little bit more out-of-the-way stuff. We really enjoyed our time with Steve and his VRBO in Cancun. That was lovely, and I'll put a link to that in the description, by the way. And then we went to the Hotel B in Cozumel and went scuba diving, and we're gonna be doing a bunch of videos. Uh, geez, I've got the parachute one, scuba diving one, probably visiting the ruins in Tulum, all on the Whole Nuts and Donuts channel, which, by the way, just got uh, monetized. Thanks to all of you. I really appreciate that. And I'm going to put a link to a card up there for uh, one of the episodes, and you can go uh, sign up for that if you're interested. Subscribe to that so you can catch those episodes. The scuba diving ones in particular will be pretty outstanding. So anyway, I'm going to have a seat right here. So yeah, enough of that stuff. <laughs> We're going back on Saturday on Christmas Day itself. Um, in the meantime, I wanted to talk a little bit about Giga Berlin, which is actually finally coming along, it seems like. We may actually have some, some progress in terms of uh, getting there. There are actual cars that are being produced now. All of the paperwork has been turned in. So it appears that it appears that as long as the German authorities decide that they're actually gonna give <laughs> approval to all of this, that we should actually have cars coming off the Giga Berlin line relatively soon. So <laughs> it was supposed to be mid 2021, but it looks like it'll be early 2022 instead. But one can hope for a Christmas miracle and maybe they'll be able to start officially producing cars by early, early January and have that be available for them. Also, apologies about the voice. <laughs> one of the things about an all-inclusive resort is that they, uh, they give you free alcohol and me and misinformation made a huge mistake two nights ago and uh and took partook of that and we suffered through that all yesterday and still a little bit today so goodness gracious <laughs> i'm way too old i'm not definitely not in shape for drinking so anyway um no more of that <laughs> no moss uh so the other thing i really wanted to talk about was the cyber truck which has as i think most people know the four motor version is coming out and elon musk said it's going to be a Oh gosh, a technology, super technology bandwagon, something cra crazy technology bandwagon, something like that. So it's going to be a pretty crazy thing that he's going to be doing with this, with the Tesla's going to be doing with this. And I wanted to talk about the possibility of a Cybertruck plaid version. So this is very much rumors. Take it with a really, really big grain of salt. <laughs> so I want to be very clear about that. This is nothing that has been announced officially. The quad motor version has been announced officially. And of course, Elon Musk has, has many times talked about the fact that they need to have 4680 batteries in production before the Cybertruck can be built because the energy density requirements are so high that, you know, it just can't basically happen unless they have the 4680 cells. So anyway, it, it will have to have that. So what would be the difference between ye old standard quad motor version and a plaid version of the Cybertruck? For one thing, well, I'm just, you know, <laughs> without even worrying about the technology, I was thinking about the fact that if this actually worked, that we would have, oh my gosh, I mean, think about it. Even if it was two and a half seconds or something for the Cybertruck to go zero to 60, that would be absolutely insane. This thing is really, really big. You know, every time I've seen one of these, I've never had a chance to see it in real life, which is unfortunate, but I have seen it, you know, up against people, up against other cars, and you start to realize just how big this truck really is. And if that thing can actually accelerate from zero to 60 miles per hour in like, say, two and a half seconds or something, <laughs> it would... I, and honestly, with the four with the four motors, it could actually be a little bit faster than that. But that would be absolutely insane if it could get that close to it, and something that large could accelerate that quickly. I don't know, you know, whether you'd have to get okay. So anyway, let's talk about the technology behind it that would make a plaid version of a Cybertruck. Number one, I have a feeling you would need special tires because right now, at least the prototype versions that have been out have had very much kind of, you know, the big burly, uh, heavy tread tires for doing a lot of work so you would have to definitely 
Hola. <laughs> the people who are up right now are the people who are working. I feel bad for them, but <laughs> it's early. Anyway, so the, the version that would have to come out would have to have some kind of different tires. You couldn't have these, you know, big, burly, off-road, heavy traction, go through the mud and rain and everything sort of tires. You'd have to have something that was a lot more like what we see on the performance models of the Tesla sedans. Now, obviously, a more hefty version of that. I, I don't know. I'm not a big tire expert, so I really don't know an awful lot about what particular tires are out there. But, <laughs> you know, they're going to have to come up with something that's very big, has a really large surface area, has relatively flat tires, right? I mean, they obviously have to be able to drive in rain and stuff, but you're not going to want anything with the kind of tread you have on there in order to have a, a, a Cybertruck Plaid Edition that can go very fast, zero to 60. So this will clearly move into the lifestyle truck area, <laughs> right? So currently right now, you know, the Cybertruck looks really comfortable driving. I love the pictures of it driving like in New York City and stuff, reflecting all of the neon lights. But it also looks super comfortable at the Gigafactory in Austin with mud on it and all of that. A plaid version of the truck is probably going to be less comfortable in that sort of work environment. Again, assuming that this actually happens. So, you know, again, take it with a grain of salt. But so, so assuming that it happens, one thing would have to be the tires, the whole wheel set would have to change significantly. Also, uh, I would assume the brakes would have to change to be more of a plaid version of the brakes. You'd have to have them vented a lot better. Currently, I believe that there are going to be electronic brakes on, I mean, there, I guess there have to be on the regular Cybertruck, which will allow it to brake and to haul things and to brake with a large trailer behind it. So you don't, again, if you're going to have the plaid version, it's probably, well, I don't know. <laughs> Who knows what Elon Musk is thinking, but I would assume that it would probably be rated to haul a lot less stuff, if anything, especially with the tires and everything. So you're going to want to change the brakes around and you're going to want to make the brakes uh, a significantly different, they're, they're going to be performance brakes in terms of speed and stopping and all of that, rather than performance brakes in terms of working and hauling heavy, heavy loads behind it. So that's two things there. The third one is that I, I assume the four, well, obviously it's going to have to be the four motor version. The, the Model S Plaid is, is currently a three motor version. The Plaid Plus, I assume if it ever comes out, again, that will be a 4680 version. That one will be a, uh, I assume a four motor version. So it would be very similar to the powertrain of the Model S Plaid Plus, if the Model S Plaid Plus ever comes out. And quite frankly, they might introduce both of these around the same time. So it's always possible that they'll have the Model S Plaid Plus and maybe the Cybertruck Plaid Plus. Maybe, I don't know if they'll just skip the Plaid since it'll be all new technology. But anyway, so the, the powertrain will very likely be similar to what's in the Plaid now in terms of the, the motors, but they will have to be, well, I guess you're trading four motors for three, so they might not have to be a huge amount more powerful, but they are going to have to have that carbon overwrap and everything in order to keep the, the, uh, the engine from flying apart when it's at high speeds. As far as top speed for this <laughs> Plaid Plus Cybertruck, goodness, I mean, it's not really aerodynamic, so, it's, I would assume maybe 150. That seems outrageously fast for a large truck. So again, even though it's a plaid, it may not be designed for outrageous speed. It just might be like, hey, how fast can we accelerate this thing? So, and, and who knows, they might, you know, again, I'm just speculating on all this. They might go a totally different direction and decide that the plaid version of the Cybertruck could haul some outrageous amount of weight like the semi truck and accelerate very rapidly. So instead of doing a zero to 60 at a very high speed while it's by itself, it's designed to haul an incredibly heavy weight and go fast. But that doesn't seem nearly as fun. I mean, that just sounds like the regular Cybertruck. So I'm thinking the Plaid is probably going to be more of a performance type thing. So <laughs> it'll be a, a stealth sports car, I guess. How's that? So anyway, I think that that, that would be how it goes. As far as uh, I don't know. It's already going to have a yoke. That seems to be pretty much a given for the Cybertruck. So I don't know that interior wise, it'll be all that different, except maybe they'll have things like cooled seats or some sort of more premium vegan leather or something that, that's on there rather than what's in the regular version. So, you know, a little bit of amenities, probably some sort of nice back screen. So a few things that will make it, you know, stand out from the regular Cybertruck on the interior. But I think most of it's going to be in the, the motors. 
which they've already pretty much got, so they can do that. And if they can figure out how to put four in, um, and then so the motors, the brakes, the wheels, and and I don't think they'll change the shape of it that much because they really, you know, that the whole point of the Cybertruck is it's pretty much a polygon. <laughs> so it looks like a low res 1980s kind of graphic or something or early 90s sort of graphic. So anyway, uh, it's interesting to speculate on this. The regular Cybertruck, well, I don't know. Again, uh, what you want to do is you want to release your most profitable cars first. So you don't really want to produce. I don't think they're ever going to have the single, mo single motor Cybertruck, which is what I have on order. So we're at least going to have to go to the dual motor, which was fine. I actually wanted to change that anyway. But I I don't know about them releasing the plaid version of the Cybertruck first, but I think that the quad motor will probably be first because it's going to be the most profitable. And why not start with your most profitable vehicle <laughs> and give everybody a chance to upgrade, right? So everybody who's currently got the tri-motor will almost definitely go to the quad motor. Everybody will kind of step up one motor from what they've got. But anyway, I think it'll be really fascinating to find out how that all goes. Um, and I just want to say at the very end of this, before signing off, I want to thank everybody for an amazing 2021 for this channel. I know this is kind of <laughs> wild to be here recording video out in, uh, in uh, Cancun area of Mexico, but I will be back home on Christmas night and I will be focusing on this channel in, intensely in 2021. I have several interviews, both that I am doing for other people and that some people are doing on my channel, which I'm really excited about. So as soon as I get back home, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss it here. It's going to suck going back to, <laughs> I think it's about 18 or 20 degrees centigrade right now. It's really, really beautiful. And I'm going to be going back to like zero or whatever. So anyway, eh. <laughs> that part won't be fun, but it'll be really good to be back home, see the kids, see the dogs, see all the people, and be able to do more normal videos for all of you. In the meantime, enjoy the lovely view, and definitely sign up for the Whole Nuts and Donuts channel because you get to see some scuba diving, some parachuting, and probably the ruins of Tulum as well. So anyway, I will talk to you all later. Have a lovely holiday time if you're getting any time off. Bye-bye. <laughs>